Understanding the relationship dimensions have to each other can help conceptualize higher dimensions, like time. Here, we have a zero-dimensional point. It has no space, length, width and height, and no time. Here, we have a one-dimensional line. Its one dimension is length. It consists of two zero-d points defining its bound, but contains potentially infinite zero-d points within it, and so can also be visualized as... Here, we have a two-dimensional square. Its two dimensions are length and width. It consists of four one-dimensional lines defining its bound, but contains potentially infinite one-dimensional lines within it, and so can also be visualized as... Note that the square isn't comprised of any one-dimensional line in particular, and diagonal lines from A to C, B to D, or any combination can be an example of one one-dimensional line out of the infinite lines comprising this shape. This will be important for understanding time. From the one-dimensional perspective, a smaller line appears inward from the larger one, with lines connecting the ends. We can interpret that the smaller line is further away than the larger line, but perspective forces it to appear to us as smaller and inward. Here, we have a three-dimensional cube. Its three dimensions are length, width and height. It consists of six two-dimensional squares defining its bound, but contains potentially infinite two-dimensional squares within it, and so can also be visualized as in the two-dimensional perspective, a smaller square appears within the larger one, with lines connecting the corners. We can interpret that the inner square is further away in the third dimension than the larger square, but perspective forces it to appear to us as smaller and inward. Here, we have a four-dimensional hypercube. Its four dimensions are length, width, height and time. It consists of eight three-dimensional cubes defining its bound, but contains potentially infinite three-dimensional cubes within it, and so can also be visualized as... From the three-dimensional perspective, a smaller cube appears within the larger one, with lines connecting the corners. It can be interpreted that the inner cube is further away in the fourth dimension, time, but perspective forces it to appear to us as smaller and inward. And so our perspective of looking at time from the third dimension may be responsible for the direction of time we perceive, and why from this perspective time flows in one direction for the observer and not the other, A to C and not C to A. This shape or timeline only has a single outcome and path it can follow, A to C, and so is deterministic in nature. This timeline can also be represented using dots, zero-dimensional points, as placeholders for the different cubes, frames in time, which make up the timeline. Here, we have a five-dimensional five-cube. It consists of ten four-dimensional hypercubes defining its bound, but contains potentially infinite four-dimensional hypercubes within it. This can be represented as... between A and C are potentially infinite hypercubes. Since each hypercube can be represented as a line, timeline, we can then represent this five-dimensional five-cube as where each timeline consists of potentially infinite three-dimensional cubes slash frames in time. Just as a two-dimensional square isn't comprised of any one-dimensional line in particular, this five-dimensional five-cube isn't comprised of any four-dimensional timelines in particular, and directions from any starting point to any outcome are possible. This allows for multiple outcomes to be possible, and so is not deterministic in nature and allows for free will. The analogies for the dimensions follow up to three dimensions in time at least, totaling a minimum of six dimensions. Going above six dimensions can become convoluted and confusing as to where and what these dimensions would be. Some have suggested there is at least one more set of three dimensions, or possibly infinite, which lie outside of what is conceivably relevant to human existence. While five dimensions allows for all potentialities and possible outcomes to exist within our universe with its starting conditions, set laws of physics, 
stacking multiple five-dimensional universes perpendicularly above each other gives a total of six dimensions, which allows for all potentialities within all timelines of every possible universe, with differing laws of physics to our own, to exist. This allows for the existence of universes and timelines with differing starting points and conditions to the one we live in, and encompasses everything that is fathomable to humans.